Your video titles could look like this for free. On a Mac, using Keynote and iMovie, presenting the Tech I Hound with Don Bullock. Hi there, and welcome to the Tech I Hound. I'm Don. When I first started my channel, I decided I wanted to do some tutorials to help people out. Those of you that have a Mac can easily make some animated titles for your videos, whatever videos that you may be doing, using Keynote and iMovie that come free with your Mac. To start off, we'll select Keynote from the dock. It immediately shows a folder here where some of your previous Keynotes may be stored. Since I'm starting a new document, I'll close that folder and go to the pull-down menu and select New. When I do that, I get a whole bunch of different backgrounds that I can use for Keynote. These are all the preset backgrounds that are available for presentations. There's a lot here. For my purposes, I'm just going to go up and select the white background and get started with that. It comes preset with some spaces for text. I'll remove those because I don't need them. That leaves me with this dark white background and I want to get rid of that as well. I start off with the white background because when I make the next change, it's real obvious that the change has been made. The change I'm making is going over to the background menu and selecting no fill. This will give me the clear transparent background that I need for the title. You'll see how this works out later when we install the title in iMovie. The next step is to go up to the top menu in Keynote and select Text. That immediately causes a text box to appear in the middle of the screen. By default, the text is 24 points and it's gray. Those will be changed as we go along. At this point, I type in the title for my video. Obviously, this text is going to be way too small for a title. So I'll have to enlarge it, and I'll also have to change the color. Once I've finished typing in the title, I'll highlight it. With the text highlighted, I can go over to the menu on the right and select Text. This is where I can enlarge the font to whatever size I want to work with. I can also change the font to whatever I would like to use from my font library. This is set up nicely because the fonts that I use the most often are at the top. After selecting the font that I want, I can then go down and select the color of the font. Keynote comes with its own color palette that I can use to color font and other things that I put in Keynote, like this green color, or right next to where you select that color is the circle for the Apple color palette, so I can select that as well. By selecting the Apple color palette, obviously I have all kinds of choices. These are the same choices you would have in any other application where you selected the Apple color palette. So you have a wide variety of color choices that you can make for any of your titles. For now, I'll just go with this purple. That's how you can select simple colors for your titles. After selecting the purple for my title, I decided that's not exactly what I would like. It just doesn't do what I want it to do because I'm going to be talking about a monitor. Keynote then offers other choices that I can make. I need to highlight this text and go back to that menu on the side where I can select text color. Doing that creates another sub-menu of some things that I could do with my text. The choices are gradient fill, advanced gradient fill, image fill, or advanced image fill. So if I select gradient fill, that's going to give me the usual two choices of a gradient that I can use for the font. Advanced gradient fill gives me a chance to slide which way I want to go in the darkness or the lightness of the gradient. Image fill allows for any image to be used as the color for the title. Then advanced image fill allows you to even do more to that background image for the title. I could spend a lot of time here showing all the different possibilities of using this section of the title coloring, but that's something that you can play with on your own to see what you want for your title. But at least you know those options are there. 
For now, since I want to get rid of the purple color and do something more appropriate for a monitor, we can try one of those image fills and see if that will work better. So I'll go up to that menu and select image fill for now. When I do, it'll turn my title gray because I haven't selected an image yet. I now get the choice to choose the image that I want so I can go to my computer and look through my files and find what I want. The image is on my desktop so I can choose it from here or I can just go to the desktop and choose it from there. Hino gives the option of choosing it from that folder or just dragging it into the program. Even once an image is selected, there's a lot of different things that I could do with that image, but I'm not going to get into all that here. That's another thing that you can play around with and see what works best for you. There are a lot of different choices here. I am, however, going to add an outline to this font that'll help it stand out a little bit more in the video. So I go to this submenu and select Outline, and it'll default to black, but I'm going to select white and thicken it up to three points. This now is the resulting title for my video. Now, many of you are already saying, I could have done most of this in iMovie, so why in the world am I using Keynote? Ah, here's where the fun comes in. You can animate how this title appears and disappears on the screen. Here are all the choices that you have. This is just a wild variety of what Keynote calls build-in possibilities for your titles or whatever text you're using. If you've watched any of my other videos, I'm sure you've seen many of these. While it'd be fun to go through all of them right now here, this is something that you can play with on your own and have a lot of fun with. Here's just a few more to whet your appetite a little and get you started with Keynote and getting excited about all of the different possibilities. I honestly could sit here and play with these for hours and decide which one is perfect for a specific spot in a video, but I'm sure you'd like to play with all of these different possibilities, so we'll end it here. I'll skip over to the one I decided to use for this video, Anvil. I'm sure you've seen this in Apple presentations. I think we've nailed it. <laughs> no. Once an animation is set, I can see it in the build order. This is down here in the corner right now. And it says here that it will start on a click. That could be changed to after the transition. And that's what I normally do, and we'll show you that later. When using Keynote, it's important to remember that this was an app that was created for oral presentations, not to be used in movies like what we're trying to use it for. So a lot of times in Keynote, it's waiting for a click of the mouse instead of moving on automatically. It's important to note here that you can do other things with this anvil animation, but the duration of how quickly it falls is probably the most important and the one that you would fiddle with the most. And you can see up in this right hand corner, the duration can be changed by using the up and down buttons next to where it says one second or using that slider under duration. Now the next thing I notice is this title is just really too small for my video and I'd like to enlarge it. So I need to go up on the right hand side and select format and highlight the text. Now that brings up the text menu where I enlarge the text. So as I do this, you probably will notice that the rainbow coloring is changing. So I am going to have to go back and adjust that using a slider in the menu that's under my rainbow selection. You can see here how adjusting that slider adjusts the rainbow color on the text. I'm sure you noticed too that I moved the text to the top of the page because that's where I want it in the title of my video. Now that I have my title set, I want to come up with a way to remove it from the screen. In order to do that, I'm going to go up to the left hand side and duplicate this first slide. So I'm going to go down to duplicate and now you can see there's two of them on the screen. Now when I duplicate that, it also duplicates the build-in feature that I have down here in this menu. So I'm going to eliminate that on that second slide, but it's still on the first slide. While I'm here back on the first slide, I'm going to make that change I mentioned before and change it from on click to after transition. That means that the action starts automatically on that slide. Now I can move down to that second slide and decide how I'm going to build out. 
The background of the slide is turned red, so we know I've selected that second slide. In keynote terms, I want to build out this title from this slide. To do that, I again go over to the right-hand side and select Animate and then Build Out. That gives me a list of Build Out animations which are different than the Build In. They're usually just the opposite. I've decided to select Skid. That's kind of a neat way to make a title disappear from the screen. That choice shows up in the Build Order down on the left-hand side. And again, it says Click, so I'm going to go After Transition. That means after it goes from the first slide to the second slide. When I make that choice, I can choose a duration. How long do I want it to wait before it makes that change? That duration equals the amount of time I want the title to stay on the video. I can now test out what I've done by going up and playing this section of Keynote cards. I first select the first card in the stack by clicking on it, and then I press the play button. For this demonstration, I'm going to just leave the title on the screen for a shorter period of time than I would normally do in a video. So there goes the title skidding off the screen. Now that I have my title and it's exactly what I want, and I have the animation on these two cards, I now need to save it. So I can go up to the File menu and go down to Save As. It comes up as Untitled, so I need to change that title to whatever I want to call it. So I type in a name for this Keynote document. I also designate where the document goes. Right now I've selected Desktop, so that's where it's going. And I can see it show up on my desktop. That only saves it as a Keynote document. Now I have to save it as a movie. Again, I select File at the top and go down to Export. Keynote can be saved in a lot of different formats, but I want to select the movie, so that's what I do. Doing that brings up this other menu. I can select the amount of time to go to the next slide after this one, but I choose zero there. Then it asks how much time to go to the next build, and I decide to use zero there. Next comes the choice of how I want the video saved. It gives me the choice of 720p, 1080p, or custom, and I chose custom. There are several choices for custom, but I want Apple ProRes 4444 because that will give me transparent backgrounds. I know some of you out there just had an alarm go off. You're thinking, I'm using Filmora or some other video editing program that doesn't recognize the transparent backgrounds of Apple ProRes 4444. Now what do I do? Hang in there, I got you covered. And then I need to make sure that I check where it says transparent backgrounds so that that's what will happen. Then I can save that, and I'm using the same name I used for the Keynote document. So I'm going to save it to the desktop, and it shows up over there on the desktop. Believe it or not, we're almost done, but now we need to put this title in a video. Yes, I know some of you out there are still thinking, I don't use iMovie, Don, so now what do I do? Just follow the simple steps that I'm going to be giving you, and you won't have any problems at all. For those of you who have never used iMovie, this is what you get when you open up the program. It's a big blank screen, but it's easy to figure out. These three windows are going to make sense once we get started. This bottom gray section is the timeline, so we're going to drag a piece of footage onto that timeline. As soon as the footage is set, a thumbnail of that footage appears in the upper left window. Now I can close that folder and expose the preview window for iMovie in this upper right side. The next step is to open up the folder with the Keynote documents. Now I want to make sure that I use the movie and not the Keynote. There's a difference between the two. I simply drag the title footage in over the video footage that was already in the timeline. As I scroll through the timeline, you can see how the video title fits over the clip. Obviously I made it too long, so I'm going to have to trim this clip. There's several ways to split a clip, but I like to right click and get this menu. Since my hand is always on the mouse when I edit, it's much easier for me to do it this way than using a keyboard shortcut. With the clip split, I just slide the excess over until the build out is right at the end of my video clip. Then I do some fine tuning to make sure it's exactly where I want it. Sometimes sliding it around leaves a gap, so I just go back and fill that up. 
Once I have everything set exactly the way I want it, I can go up to the clip with the video title and trim off the excess at the end. And now for the conclusion, we get to see how all this goes together. This is what the title looks like on top of the video clip. I'm speeding up this center section so we don't have to wait as long. And in Tim Cook's words, We do have one more thing. To make things more interesting, we're going to add some sound. To select the sounds, I need to go up to this upper menu where it says My Media and go next to that and says Audio and Video. When I do that, it brings up my massive library of audio clips. These are all soundtracks and music, including music that I've downloaded to the computer. Fortunately, there's a search feature, so I'm going to go up to that and find the track that I want. I'm going to type Dumpster into this search feature. That immediately brings up these three choices. I'm going to select the second one and drag it down into my timeline. Now let's test that and see if it's right. Well, that looks pretty good to me. Now I need a sound for the build out, so I'm going to go up to the search menu like I did before. And I'm going to type in vacuum. That's the keyword that I need. That brings up this one. I'm going to drag that one down into the timeline and place it where I want it in the timeline. With the sound clip down in the timeline, I can move it around a little to make sure it's exactly where I want it placed. Let's test that out. Well, that looked pretty good to me as well, so let's put everything together. The video clip, the title, and the sound effects. Now that I'm satisfied with my movie title here and I have all the sounds up in this media library that I've used, I can go up to File and select Share. From Share, I'm going to select File. That brings up this other menu where I can create a title for this particular file. I'll just call it Video Title for now. Once I've done that, I can go down below and select the quality that I want the saved at. No changes need to be made, so I'll press next. I'll type in the file name again at the top. You may notice that it already says desktop, and that's where I want this file to go. So I'll go down and click save. Immediately on the desktop, four files show up. These will be combined together to create the video clip. And suddenly, there it is. It'll also tell you at the top of the screen that the share was successful, so you can get rid of that notification. That video clip is now ready for any video editing software that you want to use. It's my practice, once it's on the desktop, to go over there and select it and play it so I can see if it's right. So I hit the play button, and here we go. Just import that video clip into your editing program and you're good to go. You may have noticed that I put some extra sounds on that video clip. It's really a lot of fun. So you can make some great animated titles and even add some sounds to them if you want to using Keynote and iMovie. Over here I have a video for you to watch and if you click on my picture that's over here, you can subscribe to the channel. Thank you all for watching. Hi, sweetie. Well, that's Lexi, too. Hi, girls. How you doing? How you doing, huh? Are you good girls? Yeah, we're good girls. Oh, thank you for the kisses.